Sister Destiny McLaurin is going to come and share with us some acknowledgments. Amen. Sorry. You have it? The card? No. No, the card. Do we have cards and acknowledgments that we can give to Destiny? We have one over here. Wait, we have one. We, we have one. And we have two. Hi, I'm Destiny. Um, that's my nanny and her granddaughter. And this is her first great grandson, Ace. A mother's love is forever. Sending sincere and caring thoughts at this difficult time. May you find comfort in the presence of memories you and your mother shared, knowing the loving bond you feel will live on forever with sincere sympathy from Margaret Dunmore and family. Much love. To the family from New Bethel FPC. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts. May you find comfort during this time as God strengthens your heart with his love and peace, with caring thoughts and prayers. Members of the New Bethel FPC, Pastor Bishop C.T. Bullock, Assistant Pastor Brain, Mother M. Bullock, Late Founder Bishop MLB, any other ones? Okay. Acknowledgements. The family of our beloved Henrietta James would like to extend our sincere gratitude for the support, condolences, expressions of love and kindness. God bless you all, the family. Destiny, are you going to read the obituary also? Henrietta James, known as Booty Cake, to everyone was born on November 17, 1946, to Sarah Blackwell and Rufus Jones in Williamsburg, North Carolina. As a young girl at the age of 10, she moved to Belport on Wards Lane. She later relocated to East Patchogue with her long life partner, Leroy James on Sugar. Shortly after, they re relocated and resided at 847 Americus Avenue for over 40 years until her passing. She worked various jobs bef before becoming, I'm sorry, she worked various jobs uh, before becoming an employed as a CNA at John F. Foley for 36 years where she retired. 
Henrietta was a devoted and loving wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and friend. She was the MVP pitcher of the Survivors softball team. You could always find her in the yard planting flowers, in the kitchen cooking, the register at home goods, or attached to Leroy's hip. She took pride in decorating her home. She had enough bedspreads to change her bed 40 times a month. She loved cleaning, shopping, and planting her flowers. She was known to dress to impress for every occasion. Henrietta kept her family close to her heart and her 10 pound pocketbook even closer. <laughs> she kept it filled with coupons for every fast food restaurant and home decor store, even if they were expired. She was a woman of honesty. She was kind to those she loved and Sarah Jones to, to those she didn't. She was a woman of sacrifice. She would provide for her family under any condition. She put everyone she loved before herself. Henrietta, Henrietta is survived by her husband, Leroy James, three children, James Jones of Bellport, New York, Chantel McLaurin of Bellport, New York, Sean James of East Patchogue, New York, sisters, Josephine Willis of Patchogue, Dorothy McCray of Bellport, New York, predeceased by parents, Sarah Blackwell Jones, Rufus Jones, siblings, Ola Daves, James Jones, Thomas Jones, grandchildren, Tiana Jones, myself, Destiny McLaurin, Jalen Conquest, Jaheem McLaurin, Isaiah James, Sonny McLaurin, Jalen Carrera, Sean James Jr., Roman James, and first great-grandchild, Ace McLaurin. Thank you. Thank you, Destiny, we appreciate that. Not only are we gonna hear from Sister uh, Bria again, after Sister Bria, uh, Pastor Ronnie T. Norlam Jr. is gonna come and present the eulogy. Pastor Norlam is the nephew of Sister Henrietta. So his heart will be inspired and filled by the Holy Spirit as he comes to you. And when he comes, stand up and greet him with a hearty amen. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reach as to me. Reaches to me, 
yes you do you lift me up oh, in the fullness of your grace and in the power of your name you lift me strength of my life he moves all pain misery and strife he promised to keep me never to leave me never ever fall short of his word I've got to fast and pray stay in the night Keep my mind clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. God is. Can y'all help me say it this morning? Yeah. For a moment, hallelujah. He moves Come on, all the pain, misery, on, and strife. He on. promised to keep me, never to leave me, never ever falling short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Stay. When he comes back, I've come too far, and I'll never turn back. God is, oh yes he is, God is, oh. Give God some praise. Come on, we honor the Lord in this place. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. I need four or five people that realize that God is, that God is, that that God is. Hunt your neighbor, say, neighbor, God is, God is, God is. You fill in the blank. God is my all and my all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God, but you're learning English class early in elementary school. It is as a linking verb. God is. 
You can flip the sentence and say, is God? There are a lot of people that are wondering, is God? And then there's a group of people who already know God is. Go and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is, God is, God is, God is. Don't fool me now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask the, the, the sound tech if you'll take a little bit of bass out of my mic and turn me up just a tad. Hallelujah. Turn me up just a tad. Take a little bass out and turn me up a tad. Certainly we give honor to God and we celebrate my aunt. Henrietta James. How many knew her? How many knew her? How many knew her? Can y'all put your hands together for a fun? Just, just a remarkable. Come on, I, I promise you, we should be doing better than that. We should be doing better. I, we should be doing. We we should be doing. We, we should be doing better than that. Hallelujah! That was a, a awesome woman, and I just thank God for her, and I thank God for. Uh, my Uncle Leroy and just the entire James family, uh, just thank God for them. I'm very humble for this opportunity to share her eulogy on today. And, uh, we bring you greetings from Faith Community Church International and just want to let the family know that we're praying with you and we have you lifted up. And if there's anything our church can do, uh, just please let us know and we will be there for you. I want to also just take a moment and just honor this great pastor, uh, Pastor Woolworth. Y'all put your hands together for him. His great leadership. Amen. We want to thank God for him. Thank God for him. I, my, my uncle talks so much about his church and the love his church has for him and how you come through for him, how you come and deacons have communion with them and you haven't forgotten about them in their time of, time of trial and tribulation. So we thank God for the Christ Church. Go ahead and put your hands together for this leader in this church. And then also, I want to just certainly shout out uh, Deacon Isabel Navis, who's the administrator for this church. Just an awesome woman of God. It's been a pleasure to interact with her and share with her on this week. Y'all put your hands together for her and all that she's done. Praise God. I certainly give all honor to all clergy. If there any clergy that are here, just stand so we might acknowledge you. Certainly. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. I want to thank God for my brother Marcus that's here beside me in the pulpit on today. And uh, I want to call your attention. There is a word. I want to go to the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6. And I want to look at verse 28. Verse 28 and verse 29. Certainly I want to just shout out uh, the children. Uh, I thank God for Jamie and we certainly thank God for for Sean and for Shani, how you have ministered to your parents. I mean, it has been nothing short of stellar. Amen. You know, sometimes children will forget about you, and they won't give you the same care that you gave them. But I am a witness. They have returned to the harvest from the seed that was sown in their lives and your daddy appreciates it, and I appreciate it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise God. That's my, my favorite uncle and my favorite aunt. Amen. All of them great, but, but, but it was just something about Uncle Leroy and, and, and Booty K that just really touched my heart, and I appreciate them, and I love them, and I will fight for them, and I will die for them, um, and I'm serious about it. And he knows it. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all getting quiet in here. Let me call your attention. Let me call your attention. Gospel according to St. Matthew. You all going to pray with me, right? Hallelujah. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 28 and verse 29. It says this, and why take ye thought for raiment? Watch this. Question mark. Consider the lilies of the field. Everybody say, consider the lilies. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Somebody shout grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
Hallelujah. You may be seated. If you, if you look there in, in the gospel court of St. Matthew, verse uh, chapter 6, verse 20, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not neither do they spend. Come on, bow for me for a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you will wax us in your spirit. Make us sensitive to everything you want to accomplish in this place on today, God. I lean not to my own understanding. I pray that you would text us, tweet us, even as we minister, God, we receive that which the spirit says unto the church. I pray right now that you will cause every person that ears to hear uh, hear what you desire them to hear on today. And the people of God say amen and shout hallelujah. I want to ponder and consider the thought for the time that's of mine, living like lilies. Living like lilies. Look at your neighbor. Don't smile at them. Say neighbor, oh neighbor. You got to live like lilies. Amen. Come on, look at somebody else smile them. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor. Don't, don't scare them. Smile at them. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor. You got to live like lilies. Hallelujah. Henrietta James is her name. Henrietta James, a.k.a. Booty Cake, affectionately known and, and called and, and acknowledged by her family. Aunt Booty Cake was a phenomenal, intentional, enthusiastic, inspirational, caring lady. The list could go on and on. Everybody under the sound of my voice will agree that Henry Henrietta James was one of a kind woman. She was one of a kind woman. This lady was simply special. She was special. I, I did the calculations, Marcus, Pastor Woodward, I did the calculations since the age of 12. The age of 12, Aunt Booty Cake has captured my attention. So, so 44 years, this woman has impacted my life. Watch this, watch this. We've always lived eight to 10 hours apart, either in Virginia or in North Carolina. There was 10 hours between us, Uncle Leroy, 10 hours, 10 hours, but I did the calculation, so, 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 uh, so I, I maybe have spent 60 days in person or 60 days face to face with, uh, uh, with, with Aunt, with Aunt Booty K in 44 years, maybe, maybe six months that I have spent in phone conversations with her. You know, it life changed about four years ago when Uncle Leroy discovered FaceTime and it allowed us to communicate and see each other and it felt like we were there. And so, and so, and so for 44 years, maybe I have spent about eight months of, of my life knowing Aunt Booty K and Uncle Leroy. And, and so today, Today, I feel the loss. Today, just eight months of time, I, I sense the, the, the absence of her presence. Uh, today, I miss her voice and I miss her smile. And, 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 and if I've only spent eight months with her and I feel the loss, I can only imagine how those who have spent day in sun up and sun down with Aunt Booty Cake. I, I, I can only imagine what Uncle Leroy has felt this week. This week, this week's been with this lady. He's been with this lady, Henrietta, for over 53 years. That's a testimony in and of itself. We ought to clap our hands right there because we can barely make it 53 good days. 53 years they uh, Henrietta have they have been together together Henrietta and my uncle have built this wonderful life. I, I, in fact, I wonder why I'm saying Henrietta because I've never heard him call her Henrietta. It's always Booty Cake. And, and so him and Booty Cake have built this family, this James family from the bottom 
him to the top. Yeah, Uncle Leroy, y'all were lovers. Y'all were partners. Y'all were teammates. And, 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 and I just want to say more than even that, you all were friends. Uh, y'all's love is a picture frame for marriage. And, and so I can only imagine, Uncle Leroy, what this week has took you through because you no longer have this woman beside you. I can only imagine how the children feel, Jamie and, and Shani and Sean, how you feel on today, the loss that you feel today. Aunt Booty Cake uh, was a five-star mother. She, in fact, I would suggest raise the bar when it came to motherhood. She specialized in transforming her last to her best for each of her children. Uh, it, was, it was no such thing as not enough or run out. She was always going to make it happen for her babies until the grandkids came <laughs> along. Until somebody hunt your neighbor say until until boy did she love her grand baby. She she be fussing and correcting them with her mouth, but meanwhile her right hand and her left hand were out giving them everything they asked for. And, and in fact, I was hanging out with some of the grandkids on yesterday, Isaiah and Jalen and, and Roman and Sean Jr. I was hanging out with them. They were having a debate. They were debating who had the easiest experiences with Aunt Boudicca who got away with the most mischievous deeds? And, and the kids agreed it was Roman. It was Roman, it was Roman, it was Roman. Somebody say it was Roman. They all agreed. I, I just listened. I just listened. I just recorded because inquiring minds wanted to know. In fact, on the plaque in uh, uh, Aunt Booty K's kitchen, it, it, she says it all. She says Nana's kitchen is the place where memories are made. And not only that, where grandkids are spoiled. Oh, she meant that from the heart. Henrietta James, Aunt Booty Cake, she was one of a kind, I, a one of a kind, one of a kind because she had no limits. She had no limits. She was an indoor lady and she was an outdoor woman. You, you did catch her. Let me say that again. She was an indoor lady and she was an outdoor woman. Anything Uncle Leroy does, she could do. Anything Uncle Leroy could do, she did. And the church said, our booty cake uh, was skilled, watch this, with the vacuum cleaner and the Windex. Yet she was equally skilled with the lawnmower and the hedge trimmers. Oh, her favorite pastime was, was, was her yard. Her yard, her lawn, and 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 her flower bed, and and Aunt Booty Cake loved her flowers. She spent endless hours nurturing her flowers, and and when I received this call, prophetess, when I received this call to 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 share her eulogy, God dropped in my spirit flowers. Somebody shout flowers, but but not some ordinary flower. The Lord said to me, Henrietta James was like a lily. Somebody shout lily, 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 lily. The Holy Ghost said to me, Aunt Booty Cake, watch this, lived her life like the lilies. Oh, I know Liz, Jill Scott said we ought to live our life like it's golden, but I want to suggest to you that Aunt Booty Cake wrote some new lyrics of her life. She says we ought to live like the lilies. And the church said, 
Amen. Oh, God, God said from this day forward, whenever you think about Aunt Booty Cake or, or Henrietta, think about lilies. Everybody say lilies. That, that's what happens in the text because Jesus says in verse 38, consider the lilies. Jesus in the text is discussing the complexities of life. Sometimes life will throw you a curveball. Sometimes life life, Jamie will shake us to our very core. Sometimes life will feel like it's flipped us upside down. But in the text, Jesus insists that our fundamental necessities will always be cared for by God. Our food, our clothing, our shelter, God has us. God will keep us covered. And Watch this, watch this, watch this. And, and the text says, the text says, look at here, when you even consider flowers and when you consider the lilies, you've got to understand this basic truth. I must keep growing. When you look at the lilies, the lilies, the lilies say, look at here, it's one thing I understand. Jesus says, look at here, if you're going to be a lily, you always have to keep growing. Somebody shall keep growing. Yeah, look at your neighbor, smile at him, say, neighbor, keep growing. Oh, uh, yeah, it's right there in the text. Look at verse 28. Consider the lilies, watch this, how they grow. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Uh, but God says, don't let this derail your growth. <laughs> the fact that she's gone and the fact that she's now moved to a presence with the Lord, keep growing, God says. God says, you got to grow through this. You got to grow by this. You got to grow with this. You got to grow from this. Henrietta would be here. She says, because I was a lily, it didn't matter what I was going through. I was always going to grow through it. Yeah, lilies, lilies, lily. Living like Lily says, I, I don't care what happens, I'm going to grow. Y'all are with me. Somebody shall grow. Oh, theologians suggest that because Jesus mentioned this flower, lilies, first, that somehow his favorite flower was the lily. Uh, the lily, watch this, in order to be a lily, uh, the lily had the biggest blooms, the most biggest amazing color. It had the biggest fragrance. Watch this, in order for a lily to become a lily, it had to keep growing. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God says whatever you're going through, he says, I need you to grow past it and I need you to grow through it. Somebody shall keep growing. Keep growing, keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. So there's two little quick points I be out of your way, be out of your way. My brother, my brother asked me yesterday how long you gonna be? 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 Until I'm done, I'm gonna be here. And y'all are with me, aren't you, real quickly? Real quickly, there are two quick points. If you're gonna live like the lilies, if you're living like the lilies, the first thing the text says, it's right there in verse 20, it says, toil not and spin not. Toil not, first point. Second point, spin not. Can I work real quickly? I'll be ready to wait. First point, first point, it says, if you're going to be a lily, the first thing you have to make sure you do is you have to grow and watch this. You grow by toiling not. Uh, to, to, you know, because you understand that word, that word toil means to, to be weary. So, so, Uncle Leroy, not only can we grow and expand in life, but we also can grow and expand in weariness. And if you're not careful, the enemy will manipulate you and cause you to grow in the wrong direction with the wrong feelings. And rather than being positive, we will find ourselves on a negative path. That word toil means to grow, to grow weary and, 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 and to be exhausted, to be tired, to be fatigued. Uh, that word toil means wasted energy, exhausted effort, little or no. No results de depending on what I have put in. I don't get the same result. God says, lilies, do not toil. You don't waste energy. Somebody shall study the lily. Yeah, study the lily. Study, 
Study the lily. Study the lily. Study, study the lily. Hallelujah. Study the lily. Harriet, Harrietta, you, when you saw her, nobody can say I've ever seen her stressed. Uh, maybe Uncle Levo. But none of us. She was not stressed out. You, you never saw her perplexed. You never saw her worried. Uh, most of us, when we are stressed out and we're toiling, we can read you like a book. Y'all along with me, yeah. We start to act out like we stress. Am I talking to somebody in here? Oh, you got to study the lilies on booty cake. Watch this. Knew how to turn all her work, all her chores into fulfillment and fun. And the church said, yeah, if it was yard work, it was fulfillment and fun. If it was housework, it was fulfillment and, and, and fun. In fact, I remember the first time I came to New York and I was staying with uh, uh, Uncle Leroy and, and, and Aunt Booty K. I was staying there and it was amazing. It was amazing. I watched Booty K. She ran a vacuum twice a day, every day. She knew how to turn housework. Woo, into fulfillment and fun. She turned her grandkids into fulfillment and fun. She turned her marriage into fulfillment and fun. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God says you're going to have to change. You're going to have to shift. You're going to have to move the dial in your life. It's time for you to be fulfilled and have some fun. And the church said, hunt your neighbors and go on, loosen up. Yeah, she was... She was special. She, she knew how to turn fulfillment and fun. If you listen to her, she, she did everything in slow motion. She, she really had one gear. Am I talking to anybody? You, you really fell, never saw her speeding. She, she, was, she was never fast. She was never fast, but she was constant. Y'all like go pray. Somebody shout constant. She, she was constant. Oh, she was constant. Uh, even in her speech, her speech was slow. Slow. But it was constant. Leroy. <laughs> Be on the phone with me. And she says, where's my girl? Her speech was slow, but she was constant because she was a lily. Am I talking to anybody? So God says, toil not, toil not. But, but my last point is this. He says, if you're living like a lily, it requires not only do you toil not, but the text says in verse 28, spin not. Everybody say spin not. Now notice I said S-P-I-N. The text says not S-P-E-N-D. Because based on the bitch word, she spin. She spin. She knew how to spin. Y'all along with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, spin not. Somebody shout spin not. That word spin means to cause, to turn, to whirl around quickly. Oh, it's almost like your cell phone when you can't get a signal. Oh, you start going around in circles. Oh, you start buffering. God says in order to be a lily, you cannot be spinning around in circles. Am I talking to somebody in here? God, God says your life cannot be a revolving door. Your relationships that you're in, you in the day, you out tomorrow. It is a relationship that is spinning. Somebody shout spinning. Uh, you have to understand the Lord said to me, he says this loss and this grief of her being gone, God God says you need to bind up the fact that you're going to let this loss cause you to spin in a circle, get locked in a cycle. God says today you got to make a decision. I shall not be in spin mode. Oh, you look at the text. Look at the text when you read Matthew chapter 6. He keeps saying, take no thought. Take, take no thought. Take no thought. In the Greek, it means don't worry. Some of us keep spinning because we worry too much. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, oh, oh the Lord, the Lord, as I was 
working on this message. I, I don't know why, I don't know how. It took me back to this old song by Billy Preston. Now, I got some folk in here going to know it. 1972, Billy Preston, will it go round in? Circle, some of us, some of us, we're a little aged now, but we used to uh, shake a good leg to, will it go round in circle? Will it fly high like the birds in the sky? Listen to what Billy Preston says. He says, I have a song, but I have no melody. I have a story, but I have no morals. I have a dance, but I have no steps. God says some of us are just like that. It is time for us to move beyond it. You got to get your steps right. You got to get your memorial right. You got to get your song right. God says it's time for you to get off the merry-go-round. Because lilies spin not. You all with me? Oh, I'm done. Marcus, I'm done. Uh-huh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I promise you, I'm going to my seat. But, but watch this. The question I asked the text, Eric, the question I asked, what could cause the lilies to spin? Ooh, ooh. What, what, what possibly could cause the lilies to spin? Can I tell you what it is? I'm going to my seat. It's the wind. Am I talking to anybody in here? Uh, lilies, watch this, embrace the wind. Lilies employ the wind. Lilies use the wind. Lilies trust the wind. And I know I got some Christians up in here. You understand that the wind is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. You got to understand that the Holy Ghost is breath, air, and wind. And the Holy Spirit it says when you are a lily you fall in love with the wind. Everybody say with the wind. You are with me aren't you? Uh, you got to understand that some lilies uh, they multiply and they pollinate by the bees but there are lilies that are special and they pollinate by the wind by the Holy Ghost. Am I talking to somebody in here? The Holy Spirit is not there to cause you to spin but it's cause for you to grow and and multiply. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. But the Lord been speaking to us the last 24 hours. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. the wind has been blowing. Oh, oh y'all ain't even gonna pray with me. I, I wish I had five people that was up last night. I wish I had five people that got woke up last night because you heard the wind. I want to suggest to you that the lilies embrace the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! My wife asked me last night when I got in the bed about 2.30, she says, what's that going on outside? I said, baby, you on Long Island. That's the wind. The first conversation she had with my cousin Eric this morning, did you hear that wind? That wind was going. Oh, uh, you are with me. When my brother and Darlene came to the house, they said, Pro Prophet says, did you hear the wind? We ain't heard nothing. Ask Uncle Leroy, Uncle Leroy, did you hear the wind? Man, I was out, I ain't hear nothing. Oh, but look at here, I don't know who I'm telling, but God says you got to live like the lilies, and you got to embrace the wind. I got more, one more reality to you. Uh, Pastor, I just need to check, what street are we on? Wind sore. Am I right? Hallelujah. God says you got to embrace the wind of God. The Lord is is blowing and the Lord is moving and you got to trust the wind but if you read your word Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1 it says look at here not only was Henrietta a lily not only does God want us to be a lily but it says that Jesus was the rose of Sharon and the lily in the valley but even when he was in the valley he trusts the wind you are with me he was dead for three days but he didn't spin or toil but the third day when the wind blew he got up with all power in his hand God 
God says, this earth is not a home. We're just pilgrims going through. We're just pilgrims passing through. And one day, the wind is coming to get us. Am I talking to somebody? We don't know the order. But everybody on your row, unless Jesus comes back first, the wind is coming to get us. So we got to celebrate like lilies and appreciate what the Holy Spirit does through the power of Jesus' name by the Father. And the church said, that's a good word. Y'all ought to put your hands together and give God some praise. Yeah, come on, give him some praise. Mm -hmm. Give him some praise. Come on, stand all over the building other than the family. Stand in the building. Two minutes, I extend an invitation. Extend an invitation. Somebody want to get saved. Pastor, I, I hear you. And something touched me. The, the wind <laughs> touched me. And I want to ask Jesus to come into my life. Come into my heart. I, I made a decision. Then I'm no longer going to be around family members and wonder if they knew Jesus. So we give you an opportunity to ask them to come into your life, come into your heart. Yeah, some of us are told, it doesn't matter what drug you're struggling with, what, 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 what discipline is, is out of order in your life. God says, I specialize in changing it. So we extend an invitation. Somebody want to be saved. Somebody want to rededicate your life. Musicians and the solos are coming to sing. We extend an invitation. Hallelujah. 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 Is it one? This is your moment. You want to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Our deacons are here. Our ministerial team is here. You want to ask Jesus to come into your heart. This is an opportunity. Pastor, my life been spinning. My life been in turmoil, toiling. And Pastor, I realize I'm not growing. And I'm here to celebrate my booty cake. But I really want to be a lily. This is your moment. Come on, look at your neighbor. Smile at one last time. Say, neighbor, I'll walk with you. But if the wind, the Holy Spirit is touching you, come forward. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some grace. Yeah. Give God some grace. Turn it back into the hands of Pastor Woodward. What do you say when the word has been preached? What do you say? Well, let's give him a hearty amen. You know, when you know somebody, you don't eulogize them. You just talk about them. You just tell everybody who they were and what they did. And we know that that lily is true. And that ruach, that wind blowing on you, that's true. We thank God. We thank God so much for Pastor Ronnie Northern. Ronnie T. Northern, Northern Union. Hallelujah. We thank you for the life of Henrietta on Booty Cake James. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to hear another wonderful song, and then we're going to open up for the last time on booty cake. Amen.
So, Brother Renee, you might make your way up and do what you do.
to be with my
going to ask you to move to your cars after we process outside and we will follow the hearse past the home and then to the internment site. We ask you to stay close. Be mindful of the traffic lights. We'll all go together, amen. We understand that the repast will be at four o'clock at the Quorum Fire Department. Thank all of you for coming and participating. And we especially thank Pastor Nolan for his warm words, his warm eulogy. In the name of Jesus. Thank you.